the Joe Rogan experience. I, I, I tell you this, flying into Texas, right, um, on, an, on an aircraft I was on, um, one of the flight uh, attendants came up and kind of tapped me on the shoulder as we were getting ready to land and said, well, be careful because, you know, you know, Texas has gotten rid of the mask mandate. So, and, and, and the point was from the flight attendant was, you know, did she just gonna, say it to you? Yeah. It's going to be like, she the, likes you. yeah, it's That's a wild West. It's going to be the wild you know. West. Well, you know, just like Mr. Panker, you'd be careful out there because you know, cause I like you. Yeah. And, uh, and so, but, but the point, <laughs> my wife was sitting right next to me. There was nothing untoward. It wasn't like, okay, you know, no, whatever. we were not engaged in any shenanigans, but, but the point was, was that they looked at it and they go, Oh, you know, Governor Abbott said this, and it's political, right? But yeah. I, the my point of my story is, I walked off the plane. Everybody was wearing a mask. Yeah, this is the thing yeah. the government, Ab Governor rather Abbott said. He said, "I encourage you to wear a mask. You should still wear a mask, but I don't want the state to tell you what to do." Right. Right. That's what I support. And if you it's don't want the state to tell you what to do, you shouldn't want the federal government exactly. telling you what to exactly. do. Exactly. Exactly. But everybody I've seen in Austin. Wearing wear a mask, mask. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. until you go to a restaurant and then you sit down, then there's no mask, and I don't understand that. Well, the whole, the whole thing yeah. is nonsense. Yeah. You have to wear a mask when you go to pee, and then you don't wear a mask when you come back and Get sit back down at your table. table. Like, okay. Yeah. I mean, because you know, to be fair, they've got you know mostly six foot distance. You know, they have it, the places that I've been here in Texas. Uh, they they keep the social distance, but I guess my point was like you get this, and, and, and we talked about this earlier off uh, before the show, but was the idea that. Some people just like to suffer, and they suffer well, right? They enjoy yeah. the fact that yeah. this, is, this is hard and bad, and that's really sad, but it's true. There's people that they enjoy being depressed. It's, it's a hard thing to, uh, to even say because you, you don't want it to be real. You don't, you don't yeah. want there to really be people out there that like th – when there's some people that when we got shut into our homes and everyone was sad and everyone was scared – they enjoyed it because that's how they live all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it's just it, it, it's their time to shine. Some yes. people have have really sh shown during the pandemic. Yeah. And it's like I saw this post from this this uh, individual who, it's a professional, uh, clearly from their job, and they they posted, ah, oh, I'm dealing with such anxiety now because of the possible return to normal and the idea that oh, I'm going to have to travel and I won't be able to have dinner with my kids and I'm just like, and I'm thinking, fuck you. You've had the, it was clear from the post that they've had the luxury of working from home yeah. and not losing their job and they could teach their kids. And it's this idea of not opening the public schools. These kids out here who don't have Wi-Fi, who don't have laptops, who have a one parent home, who has to work, yeah. all those can't afford a tutor, can't make a little pod to teach their kids. You know, those people aren't doing well, right? And those kids are suffering and then you get like the, the people who can afford to set up a private pod for their kids and bring a tutor in and have strong Wi-Fi and can do all those things, have English as a first language. And they're doing just fine. And they're like, well, we should not go back to school. Fuck you. Kids have disappeared off the radar yeah. during this past year. And the schools don't even know where they are in places like New York and Chicago and other places. So yeah. it's, it's fucked up. Yeah, you know, it's there's narratives out there. And the problem with these narratives are it's not that they're all completely inaccurate. The problem is that when you say when you when you espouse these narratives in a very condensed processed way like social media, you get a bunch of people that support it and a bunch of people that argue against it, but if it's a narrative like we should stay home, we should all wear masks. Yeah. Pretty hard for people to fight against that, right? So people they, they, they pile on and then and then people get addicted to like the reactions and the interactions on Twitter and it's like it becomes this w weird fucking method of communication w method of discussing ideas and they get people get really attached to whatever whatever they believe in whether they believe the kids should be in school to the end of time and, and all all fucking interactions should be done through zoom or that we should all throw away our masks and achieve herd immunity and right. we should take vitamin d and go out in the sun and fucking exercise and be healthier and you can do you can do all of it right you can wear a mask because you know okay fine i who can, I, I my my freedoms aren't infringed by wearing a mask no. i don't give a shit it's not that big right? a deal yeah but at the same time do i want my kids back in school do I think it's healthy for my oldest boy Sluggo to, you know, be wearing his, you know, pajamas or his sweatpants all day long and no. learning from distance? No. And I think that it's just 
so there are I, I you know I do agree with the idea that there there are people that that suffer well. They're kind of wielding this whole thing as they a, like a sort of justice. Yeah. So. Well, you know, a good example. The comedy community is an interesting example because what, one of the things that uh, a lot of my professional comedian friends have found is that there's a lot of people that never worked. And when I say never, I'm exaggerating, but they weren't they weren't successful. They mm -hmm. didn't they weren't selling out clubs and theaters. They weren't doing well. And they're so angry that some comics have decided to go on the road again. Because a lot of places have opened up. Texas has opened up, Florida's opened up, you can go and do shows. But that's a chance to do work, right? I mean so It is, but they're angry and they, they, they want the, the the narrative is that you're doing these super spreader events. People even got mad at me and Dave Chappelle because Dave and I were doing these shows at Stubbs uh, amphitheater in Austin outside. There's no evidence whatsoever that the the, the that the virus spreads outside. Right. And I mean literally none. Yeah. There's no evidence. And then on top of that, we test everyone in the crowd. It's expensive. It takes a long time. The people get there early. We test the entire crowd. Are you doing temperature checks? Or you doing no, we're doing we're doing uh, oh antigen God. tests for the entire crowd. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean that's great, but it's crazy. It's expensive, yeah. but it's the yeah. way to do it. And we had a great fucking time, and we're doing it again. And but some comics have been mad at that. But if you go and look at the comics that are mad, they're all unsuccessful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or super liberal, and they're virtue signaling. They're looking to to, to like tag on to this idea that what you're doing is bad and then what we should do is all stay home and, and lock down like yeah. you can go outside and by the way most people like 99.9 whatever percent survive there was a recent study that showed that 78 percent of all the people that are hospitalized from covid are overweight yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, the Where is the issue. shame yeah. right. in that? We, right. we, we, all these people are talking about fat shaming. Right. You want to talk about the super spreaders? Yeah. It's people that have ignored their health. And those people need help and they need support and they need love. But there's a reality to the people that are getting sick from this. If everyone was healthy, this would almost be a non-issue. Yeah. Now, that's not a health shaming thing. Like we should be shaming people that are in poor health or people that are born with, you know, um, uh, comorbidity factors like diabetes right. and whatever. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the yeah. Re we're not looking at this thing a hundred percent objective. If we were, we would have a completely different take on it. Well, look, there's no science. There's no, that's an example. I, I'm focused because I got the these, I got these three knuckleheads at home, right? So I'm focused on like the the, the education side of things yeah. as well. And so as 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 are you, but it, it's there's no science. People believe science. Well, of course, believe science. That that that's one of the funniest narratives. Believe science. Well, who the fuck doesn't believe? I mean, that's fine, but it's a political issue, right? So, but I think that uh, there's no science that shows that that. You know, a six foot distance in public schools for kids, right, is 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 uh, is essential to their health. So, you know, in fact, the science shows three foot. That's fine. And what that does, though, the importance of that is logistics, right? Because it allows for you to get the schools open again. People will talk about this six foot distance. We can't get the kids back into their classrooms with six foot distance because we can't get enough of them in there. It's the little things. It's the logistics of it saying, well, get it down to three foot, which is what the science supports. And then you can get these schools. You can start opening these places back up in a responsible manner. Honest to God, we're going to look at this thing in, in, in a year or two. Maybe we won't because we're not going to be honest with ourselves. But we're gonna, if we actually did an honest hot wash of this uh, reaction to the pandemic, our reaction has been pathetic. Right over over this past year, I, this I think, has not been a shining moment for us. Don't you think part of the problem is we started out with a different idea what the virus is? We started out thinking that it was going to be like the next Spanish flu, and that it was going to kill. I mean, everyone was terrifying, me included. I was scared yeah. of it in the beginning. I thought that it was going to be something that kills ten percent of the population, you know. And no. it didn't turn out to be that way. But we never made an adjustment. So, yeah. No, I. Uh, yes, I think that's true, and I think also part of it is is you can't negate the uh, or minimize the political reaction, right? If 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 Joe Biden had been president when this thing broke, I guarantee you the reaction would have been somewhat different. The fact that Trump was in there yeah. and created so much emotion, uh, and there was such animosity. Uh, Thank God Trump yeah. wasn't pro vaccine. 
we would be fucked <laughs> because yeah. you know he was pro so many other therapeutics and they're like hydroxychloroquine is racist you know like yeah thank god he didn't say anything about ivermectin or you no. know, vitamin d or quercetin or any of the other things that we've been or zinc yeah but i, I do think that way you know that was a big issue was was like oh yeah. Yeah, see he's so polarizing yeah. and we can't and we can't trust the the, the vaccines because you know they were developed under trump right well, Fuck it, believe the science. It were developed by companies that have nothing but scientists and doctors and engineers working inside them. Yeah. And so if you believe the science, then you better believe that they were developing vaccines that, that you should have been happy about. So, you know, I guess, everything, you know, I don't know. It's, it's the, the political nature of, of this country. And, and again, going back to what we were talking about earlier with the Russians and the Chinese, they see that and they just keep, they yep. keep sticking the knife in right yeah and and the more they do the more they tear the threads of of our belief from the system and the more polarized we get and the more yelling that goes on and the more bullshit people believe when they read social media and they don't bother to say well who wrote this right Right. is this actually a a scientific piece of work or is this just and and what's the origin of it what's the outlet right and half the time the outlet is overseas someplace and then you got to dig into it it's it's like an asset tracing exercise who owns that company right then you find out it's owned by some you know russian entity that's got an operation out of cyprus whatever catch new episodes of the joe rogan experience for free only on spotify watch back catalog jre videos on spotify including clips easily seamlessly switch between video and audio experience on spotify you can listen to the jre in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free spotify is absolutely free you don't have to have a premium account to watch new jre episodes you just need to search for the jre on your spotify app go to spotify now to get this full episode of the joe rogan experience